This video will show you how you can use the standard reduction table to determine whether a reaction between two given species is spontaneous or not. You should have a copy of the standard reduction potentials of half cells table with you as you watch this video. Here we will zoom in on the portion of the table we're talking about at a particular time. It would be good for you to pause the video frequently and find what we're pointing out on the full version of the table. Remember, oxidizing agents are on the left side of the table, and reducing agents are on the right. All the half reactions on this table are written as reduction half reactions. Notice the oxidizing agents are all gaining electrons. And here's how it works. An oxidizing agent on the left will react spontaneously with every reducing agent on the right below it. Looking at your entire table, you can see that fluorine, or F2 gas, will react spontaneously with everything on the right side of the table, other than F-. So fluorine is the strongest oxidizing agent on the table. A reducing agent on the right, for example Rb, will react spontaneously with every oxidizing agent above it on the left. Again, looking at the entire table, rubidium metal, Rb, reacts spontaneously with everything on the left side of the table, other than Rb+. So Rb solid is the strongest reducing agent on this table. It's really important for you to distinguish between an ion of an element and its neutral or atomic form. For example, Rb solid is the strongest reducing agent and is very reactive, whereas Rb plus is a very weak oxidizing agent and doesn't react with anything on this table. Let's look at an example. Mg2 plus will react spontaneously with everything below it on the right, and calcium metal is below it on the right. So the reaction between Mg2 plus and calcium is spontaneous. Notice that a backslash can be drawn between the two species. So when a backslash can be drawn between two species, we can say that they will react spontaneously with each other. Now let's say we mix Mg2 plus with manganese metal, Mn. Mg2 plus will react spontaneously only with species on the right below it. And manganese metal, Mn, is above it on the right, not below it. So we mark the diagonal line between Mg2 plus and Mn with a red X. And we state that Mg2 plus does not react spontaneously with Mn metal. You should be able to see now that if a backslash can be drawn between two species, the reaction between them is spontaneous. But if a forward slash can be drawn between the two species, the reaction between them is non-spontaneous. Here's an example question. Will acidified MnO4- react spontaneously with sulfate? Acidified permanganate, or MnO4- means MnO4- is combined with H+. This half reaction is the fourth one from the top of the table, and the MnO4- and H+, are found on the left side. The sulfate ion, SO4-2-, is found on the right side above acidified permanganate. The diagonal between them is a forward slash, so they do not react spontaneously. So the answer to this question is no, acidified permanganate will not react spontaneously with sulfate. Here's another question, will chlorine gas oxidize silver metal? Chlorine gas, or Cl2, is found here on the left side of the table. And silver metal, Ag solid, is found here on the right side. Cl2 will oxidize anything below it on the right, and Ag solid is below it on the right. The diagonal drawn between Cl2 and Ag is a backslash. So we can say, yes, this reaction is spontaneous. Chlorine gas will spontaneously oxidize silver metal. Here's another question. Will Cl metal reduce I2 solid? Cl metal is here on the right and it will spontaneously reduce anything on the left side above it. And iodine, or I2 solid, is above it on the left. 
And if we draw a diagonal between CO and I2, we see it's a backslash. So this reaction is spontaneous, so CO metal will reduce I2 solid. Here's another question. Can hydrochloric acid be safely stored in a copper container? Hydrochloric acid, HCl aqueous, will dissociate into H plus and Cl minus ions. The other species present is copper metal, Cu solid. We find copper solid on the right side of the table here. Notice there's another copper solid two lines above this one, but everything we will say about this will also apply to the other copper, so we'll just discuss this one. The chloride ion, Cl-, appears by itself here, higher up on the right side of the table. And you can see that Cl- and copper metal are on the same side. They are both reducing agents. It turns out that if two species are only on the same side, they will not react with each other. The Cu solid and Cl- are both reducing agents only. We can use a rad X to indicate that these two species do not react with each other. The other species present is H+, which is found by itself down here right at the bottom of this table. H plus appears in many half reactions, but in those it is combined with other things. Here we have H plus by itself, so we use the half reaction the yellow arrow is pointing to. The diagonal between H plus and Cl minus is a forward slash, so these do not react spontaneously. And the diagonal between H plus and Cu solid is also a forward slash, so these do not react spontaneously either. H plus reacts spontaneously only with those reducing agents below it on the right. These are not shown on this diagram. So we can conclude that there's no spontaneous reaction involving these three species. So hydrochloric acid does not react spontaneously with copper metal. And therefore, hydrochloric acid can be safely stored in a copper container. Here's another question. Can nitric acid be safely stored in a copper container? You might recall that nitric acid is HNO3. You can always look up acids on your acid table. HNO3 is a strong acid, so it ionizes completely to form H plus and NO3 minus ions. Of course, the other species present is solid copper. Again, we locate solid copper on the right side of the table here. We see that H plus by itself is below copper on the left side. So we see that there's no reaction between copper metal and this H plus ion. However, when H plus and NO3 minus are both present, we find this half reaction on the left side above copper, and another one slightly above the first one. When there are two possible oxidizing agents, the one farthest from the reducing agent, or the higher one in this case, produces the preferential reaction, so we'll focus on the higher half reaction. We see that nitric acid, which consists of hydrogen and nitrate ions, reacts spontaneously with copper metal, because we can draw a backslash between them, as shown by the green arrow here. So nitric acid should not be stored in a copper container. We don't want an acid reacting with the container that it's stored in. Here's another question. Will aqueous iron 3 nitrate react spontaneously with aqueous tin 2 nitrate? Dissociating FeNO3-3 gives us the Fe3 plus ion. And dissociating SnNO3-2 gives us the Sn2 plus ion. And both of these give us nitrate ions. If you look for nitrate ions on the reduction table, you'll see that the only place they appear is when they're combined with H plus ions in nitric acid, like we showed in the previous example. We can summarize here that if no H plus ions are present, then the nitrate ion, NO3 minus, can be considered a spectator and can be ignored. Since there are no H plus ions present in this example, we can ignore the nitrate ion. So we just cross it out. So the two ions we need to consider are the Fe3 plus and Sn2 plus. 
we find Fe3 plus here on the left. We see that there's an Sn2 plus ion here on the left below it. Because Fe3 plus and Sn2 plus are both on the same side and are both oxidizing agents, we assume that there's no reaction between Fe3 plus and Sn2 plus ions. However, this is not the case. If we look closely, we see that Sn2 plus is also on the right side. So as well as being an oxidizing agent, Sn2 plus can also act as a reducing agent. And since a backslash can be drawn between these, the reaction between Sn2 plus and Fe3 plus is spontaneous. So we can state that aqueous iron 3 nitrate will react spontaneously with tin 2 nitrate. Another ion we have to watch carefully is Fe2 plus, the iron 2 ion. Here it is on the left side as an oxidizing agent. But you can see it also appears higher on the right side where it can act as a reducing agent. Here's another question. Will Fe2 plus react spontaneously with nickel metal? Recall that Fe2 plus can act both as an oxidizing agent and as a reducing agent. So it's found on the left and on the right. The Fe2 plus on the left side can only oxidize things below it on the right side, as shown by the red arrow here. The Fe2 plus on the right side can only reduce things above it on the left side, as shown by the top red arrow. Here is nickel metal on the right side. You can probably see looking at this that neither of these Fe2 plus ions will react spontaneously with nickel metal, but let's have a closer look. The Fe2 plus on the right side will not react with nickel metal because they're both on the same side. They are both reducing agents, so they won't react with each other. And the nickel metal on the right will not react spontaneously with the Fe2 plus on the left side either as a forward slash can be drawn between these as shown. So we can see that neither Fe2 plus ion on the table will react spontaneously with nickel metal. So the answer to this question is no, Fe2 plus will not react spontaneously with nickel metal. To review, if a backslash can be drawn between two species, the reaction between them is spontaneous. But if a forward slash can be drawn between two species, the reaction between them is non-spontaneous. And if two species are only on the same side and are both only oxidizing agents, there is no reaction between them. Or if two species are only on the same side and are both only reducing agents, then also there is no reaction between them. Be careful with Fe2 plus or iron 2 Sn2+, or tin2, Cr3+, or chromium3, and Cu+, or copper1, as these ions are all found on both sides of the table, and can act either as oxidizing agents or as reducing agents. So you have to look at them on both sides of the table when determining the spontaneity of reactions involving these species.